Africa. Africa. Who's the one who brought the jungle fame? Who's the king of animals in Africa? Kimba the white lion is his name. When we get in trouble and we're in a fight, who's the one who just won't turn in round? Who believes in doing... We're back. Here's Paul Ablin with a quick review of Scotland, PA. First, you take a little something from William Shakespeare. In this case, Macbeth. Set it in the 1970s. And you've got Scotland, PA, the 2001 dark comedy distributed by Lot 47 Films. Now, whenever I mention this one to people, it's always the same. How do they manage the witches? They manage. Trust me, they manage. Veteran actor James Legros, together with Laura Tierney, best known for her work on the hit TV series News Radio, play Mr. and Mrs. Macbeth, two employees at Duncan's Restaurant. Duncan had already sold his donut shop. And with the help of some informative witches, the couple plot their meteoric rise to wealth, only to finally be defeated by a stubborn Macduff, played by Christopher Walken. With taglines like Greasy Spoon, Bloody Murder, and Burgers, Fries, and a Side of Mayhem, Scotland, PA is an off-the-wall dark comedy that's great if you've never read Shakespeare, and even better if you have. And finally, M. David Cohen and his comments on Georgie Girl. He always loved his mints. <laughs> Quit stalling. I'm going to pump you full of lead. You're a two-timing broad. I'm long, not broad. Yes, very long. Very long, but you're a broad too. Hey, are you longer than your broad, or is your broad broader than your long, eh? How is your broader, anyway, and your sister? <laughs> It was 42 years ago, give or take some months, when Georgie Girl opened in America. Now, Georgie Girl sported a hit song as part of its soundtrack, and Lynn Redgrave in the starring role as the awkward, oversized Georgie. But that's not why its anniversary is worth mentioning. What makes Georgie Girl so noteworthy is the fact that it was the first film in America to be designated for mature audiences. That's right, if you know anyone who's more than 42 years old, you can tell them that they're actually older than films marketed specifically for mature audiences. As a side note, as America's first film designated for mature audiences, Georgie Girl apparently brought us closer to the apocalypse, or at least that's what one conservative Christian website implies. RaptureReady.com, which bills itself as your prophecy resource for the end times, lists Georgie Girl on its timeline of immorality. Immorality, or so they tell us on a different part of their website, is one of the 22 signs of the coming apocalypse. Georgie Girl figures prominently on their immorality timeline, coming in as the 14th item on their list of 50. I don't know if Georgie Girl played in my hometown back in 1966, but I do know that if it did, it had to have been shown on a Wednesday or Thursday night. All the serious or artsy-fartsy films played only on Wednesday or Thursday nights back then at our lone theater. Naturally, I didn't see it. I was still in diapers. But I do try to catch it out of nostalgia whenever it turns up on cable, which it did frequently enough until rather recently. The film's opening sequence under the hit title song is a delight and somewhat reminiscent of TV's That Girl. We follow Georgie as she walks past a London hairstylist salon and is enticed by the wigs on display to try a new hairstyle, which she promptly washes out in the ladies' room at the next subway station. Quickly, we are introduced to James Mason's character, an elder and rich suitor who is enamored with the awkward Georgie. And then, a little later, we meet Alan Bates, who plays her roommate's boyfriend and Georgie Girl's object of affection when he stops by her flat and takes a bath. Yes, a classic love triangle is formed. Georgie Girl is a time capsule, transporting us back to the halcyon days of the mid-1960s, when Britain was enjoying its post-war prosperity. The 707 was the most advanced means for crossing the Atlantic. London was distinct from New York and the sun still never set on the British Empire. 1965's dark thriller, Bunny Lake is Missing, 
holds the same distinction, in my ever so humble opinion, with the added benefit of Kier Dulé in the cast, although Kier Dulé doesn't take a bath and leave the bathroom door ajar, as Alan Bates does in Georgie Girl. Oh, look at our programs later this evening. At half past seven, you're a brick. A brand new radio panel game with the accent on the building train. Then at eight o'clock... The prude. And if you're not into the idea of renting a movie just to see what yesteryear's idea of mature subject matter was, or to find out just how close we are to the apocalypse, there's still Lynn Redgrave, James Mason, and a classic hit song to hold your attention. Could ever see the loneliness there.